Australian sim racing, whilst we do compete in many series, it is undeniable that the biggest and most competitive competitions in the nation take place in the V8 supercar. These 650 horsepower beasts are unlike anything else on the iRacing sim and require a very defined driving style to go fast in, one that I've never quite been able to fully adapt to. The term that you need to drive like you have an egg underneath your pedals that you can't break seems to come to mind because the supercar requires ballerina levels of finesse. I've had flashes of speed over the years in these cars with a best finish of 6th place in the biggest race of the year and even a freak round win in what was the second tier supercar series at the time based on pure consistency across the night. But if I'm ever going to check off a major V8 supercar series race win, I'll have to race in more to fully understand the car's quirks. So I had to bite the bullet. I signed up for the V8 Supercars Online Premier Series for the remainder of the 2023 season, starting things off with their fourth round of the season at Phillip Island to get a benchmark on where I truly stand right now in the pecking order after several months out of the car. In V8 Scops, over 100 drivers each round attempt to make the top 80 to compete on race night, with the top 40 fastest of those drivers making it through to the main event. Fortunately, we made the cut to make the main event without too much of a struggle. However, in the all-important qualifying session on race night that sets the grid for race one, we struggled to hook up the lap we were capable of. Bottling an excellent opening run at the final braking zone, we entered the session in a lowly and very disappointing 32nd place. A harsh reality check if ever I needed one in the supercar, and somehow, against all odds, it was about to get even worse. With my lack of running in the supercar, I don't rehearse my starting procedure regularly, and I bet you can already see where this is going. In a slight lapse in concentration, I didn't have enough throttle engaged when I let go of my button clutch, which meant the car quickly dropped RPM and stalled on the grid before the lights had even gone out. There was a brutal silence from my car while everyone else was bashing the limiters in theirs. By the time I had refired the vehicle back up, the lights had long gone out and I wasn't going. We would enter turn one dead last. For all the rubbish I give this car about how it drives, I've got to say that it does make for some mega racing with overtaking being heavily promoted with its poor braking and acceleration characteristics. And if there is one thing that cannot be denied, I'm a far better racer than a qualifier. So I quickly got my head down and made spots back up. Benefiting from the opening lap chaos and drivers slowing each other up, we caught up immediately and by the end of the first lap we're already up three spots and then taking another three spots on lap two courtesy of a double overtake at the Honda hairpin. On lap three, we got a colossal squeeze going around the outside of Ewan Baker with just enough room being given, hard and mouth stuff for sure. After just three laps, we had already recovered 10 spots and moved ahead of our qualifying position. The battles in the lower places were just as fierce as up the front, with drivers dooring one another to make up spots and taking dives at any opportunity. With some big sends of our own, with the occasional 0x contact assistance, we found ourselves in clean air and with some ground to catch to the cars ahead. We were catching the cars ahead significantly, sometimes catching 3 to 4 tenths a lap, which was fantastic progress against some far more seasoned drivers in this car. But I wanted to continue on the offensive charge here, so on just lap 10 of 27 in this first race, we pitted out of 27th place for our compulsory pit stop. The thinking behind this early stop was to undercut the cars ahead on their far older tyres, get a gain initially and hopefully hold them off towards the end of the race when the tyre drop off plateaus a little. This worked out brilliantly for us as we sometimes gained over a second and a half a lap to the cars we were chasing before the stops. Even once a few more had pitted, they pulled me along in their draft on their newer tyres and allowed me to slightly conserve my tyres. That was until we caught up to former supercar driver and Sandown 500 winner Richie Stanaway who had yet to pit. We went for a move at the Honda hairpin, only for the car behind to try an optimistic lunge on me. We ended up three wide and contact was made. Fortunately, I was the only one of the three to pull up for the corner and we could carry on with just a bent fender. I'd lost my draft to the cars ahead, which sucked, but we were now in 22nd place, still a significant net gain of five positions in the pit stops. We chose our battles wisely for the remainder of the race, not fighting cars with a significant tyre advantage over me, but instead slotting in behind and trying to hang with them in the draft. 
This plan worked out great and capitalizing on a few rivals errors, we finished in 23rd place just 27 laps after we entered turn 1 in 41st. Tonight's Scops round format featured two races with a progressive grid, so we would start race 2 up in 23rd place. We had a 10 minute warm up between the races and I'm sure you can all guess what I spent that time practicing. And hey, they say that practice makes perfect and I would agree as we got a pretty great start this time and would even gain a handful of spots in the opening corners. We managed to avoid the chaos around us beautifully later in the lap at MG Corner and we ended lap 1 in a dizzyingly high 17th place. From here, we found ourselves in a train with some very experienced drivers so we were in great company to settle into. For this reason, we decided to extend our opening stint in this race by 2 laps compared to race 1, diving into the pits on lap 12. This was still earlier than many drivers around us so we would still gain from the undercut but we shouldn't be so compromised that we cannot fight later in the race should we need to. We came out primarily in clean air, just needing to clear one driver yet to cycle into the pits. When some others had taken their compulsory pit stop 3 laps later, the race pace had increased significantly. We struggled a little to hold on to the cars ahead running in the train, but once again we had pulled off a great strategy to jump into the 13th position up 4 places in the pit stops. But losing drafts from the cars ahead was unfortunate, so we had to become the conductor of our own mini train with just 5 laps to go. It was clear that one of the drivers had superior pace to me at this phase, so like in race 1, we elected to not battle it out and instead use their draft to our advantage to try and hold on to 14th place. One of the cars behind, Tom Fury in particular, had a stunning pace and quickly jumped into 15th place to start attacking me. Fury would attempt a little bump at Lukey Heights to try and run me wide, but instead unsettled my car in a big way with myself narrowly holding the car underneath me. To his credit, Fury waited up to ensure that he did not capitalise from the bump and one lap later his superior pace eventuated into a pass at the same corner which I elected to not fight too hard. With the battles heating up ahead, one driver was sent off the circuit late in the race which we capitalised on to regain a spot, resulting in us snatching the 14th spot which we would hold all the way to the chequered flag. After entering turn 1 in the opening race in 41st and last position, to end up 14th was a remarkable recovery that I've got to say I'm pretty proud of. It proves my ability to fight regularly within the top 10 is possible in a V8 supercar. I just need to keep chipping away at it to learn the quirks to get those last tenths of a second out of the car and the abnormalities in not stuffing up your qualifying lap and stalling the car on the grid. The next round of V8 Scops takes place in early May at the Indianapolis road course which should be brilliant fun. I won't be flat out grinding the supercar by any means but I'm keen to see what I can do with the lessons learned from Phillip Island.